Okay, audio is back, folks. I'm going to kick off from the start. A bunch of folks were struggling there, and I had to uh, switch my, my internet connection. So let's kick off at the beginning again. Looking at Iris Viewpoint, um, this is my landing screen where I come on. My first screen I'm interested in, call it my market one on my left-hand side here. I've got sense that's coming through. I'll show you widgets and how to add them in a moment. A couple of things you can do with sense. Of course, you can click on it, uh, and the sense announcement in of itself will pop up and you can start getting a sense of what's happening with the sense uh, and, and, and work from it from there. Uh, what I've also got, you've got the ability to, to compress and just get sense headlines. I, I want more information around that. It shows me my code on the side, but I, I'm the chap who wants to see those couple of lines at the same time. And of course, you can filter. Uh, you can add as many as you want or as many as you don't want necessarily. <clears throat> You can run through different filters. You can filter on specific words. You can filter on specific phrases. I want everything. So I'm, I'm not filtering at all in that sense coming through at all. Uh, I, I want to see all the sense as it's coming live into my space. Okay, folks, on to third internet connection. Now we should be totally in biz. Um, on my side here, I'm looking at, I've just got a watch list of local indices. I've got some offshore indices. I've got currencies, some commodities. So this really is my come in and I got a sense of what's happening in the market and what's coming through and the like. Uh, I can, on that little three little there, I can uh, remove, etc. So let me, that's top 40. Uh, and I can say, let's remove the top 40. Then if I want to re-add it, J200, and there's my top 40. The ones ending in T will be total return. I'm not interested in those. I want actual top 40. It says security already in my watch list, and then I can drag it down. Ah, it's Aussie I removed from the process. So there's my Aussie September, and that now sits at the top. And I can drag them. I want my top 40 to sit just uh, under my index there so that I can see it nice and simple. Um, you can see moves, open highs, closes, etc. Uh, as I'm adding and changing, I'm saving. I can load watch lists and of course I can save as and I can call it a new name if I particular want. In this case, this is literally called watch list. This is my indices watch list as you can see what I've created the name up there. You can also click on that little box there and you can add and subtract what you do or don't see. Uh, there's a vast amount. For my indices, my bids and offers are irrelevant because there's no bids and offers in indices, but there are in commodities and the like. But you can add and subtract, and there's a vast amount. And I'm going to go through those in a little more detail in a moment as well. What you can see running across the top up here is I've only got six different tabs, and my newest grayed out. I can't add a seventh tab. But what I'm doing is I'm adding within the tabs. You can add tabs within tabs. So I've carved this tab in half, and then Behind that one, I've added my EMS. So what EMS is, quite simply, is I'm looking at a watch list of, of currencies, uh, emerging market currencies, and I'm focusing on them against the US dollar. So if the RAND's having a big day, is it the czar that's moving, or is it EM currencies that are broadly moving? What I can then do on that little hamburger menu, widget menu there, I can say, oh, okay, let's uh, add a widget. And here pops up my various different lists of the different widgets that are possible to be adding. Let's quickly delve into them. Adjustments will be splits and consolidations and the like. Uh, charts coming up in a moment. Course of sales, literally sales going through. Depth histogram, I'll show you in a moment. Ditto market activity and depth. Uh, a market map, the status of the market. Um, we've got news, we've got a news ticker. Uh, let me, I'll show you order pad order ticket, dividends that have come through, portfolios, quotes, tutorials, quote tickers, security information, etc. I'm going to go through all of those in more detail. Some of them are, are obviously self-explanatory. A watch list is going to pull up a watch list, and then you'll say, what's the name of the watch list that you want? Uh, viewpoint training, explanatory, survey, explanatory. So let's add one here, and let's add market activity. You click on it, you click OK. You see what it did there? It created a third tab. So you can keep on tabs within tabs. Now, what you got here is I'm looking at the total market as opposed to, let's just look at large capitalizations. And then you can sort them by what do you want, by volume, by percentage, gainers, losers, by value, uh, gainers by points, top losers by points. Typically, my focus is going to be on value. 
uh, and then I'm going to want it to search on value. So I literally just click on the value. No surprise, your big value is uh, NASPASS, 665 million ZAR so far today. And so that list will then go down. And you can just basically keep on, say, add another widget and you get another tab. And then you run out of tabs eventually, but you can hide tabs behind tabs. And if you don't want them, click on it. It's gone. No problem at all. Let's go across to what I call my top 40 tab. Now, this is where my watch lists sit. So this is literally all of my watch lists. So what I've pulled up here is how you search for it is a slash uh, J200. What that does is it'll bring in all the shares within the J200, which is top 40. If I went uh, J201, that gives me would give me the mid cap. So that automatically pulls in all the different stocks for that particular index. So nice and simple, I've got all the different shares sitting here within one single watch list. And this is now in its entirety top 40. What I have uh, uh, sorted on in this particular case is market capitalization. So my NASPASS, British American Tobacco, Billiton, Richmond, as the list goes down in terms of market cap. But I could say, actually, show me the movers. So that's movers from biggest to smallest down, uh, and there's my movers from winners to losers. A couple of other points. You'll see a little interesting icon there. That means that Anglo-American has had a sense today, and if I click on it, it shows, sorry, Anglo-American Platinum, it shows you all the sense announcements. So basically what you've got here is a filter of sense, but filtered on AMS. So there's the one that came out at 801 this morning, dividend declaration. A minute before that was a results announcement, production update from last week on the 18th, which was Thursday. So very quickly, you can get a sense of what's happening in, in, in Anglo Platinum, where's it all sitting, what the story is there. And that was notified to me by that little icon that is sitting there and coming through. What I've also added is I've got my last, and that will be last trade today, my percentage moves, my czar moves, bid asks, open, low, highs. Uh, I don't bother with close, um, although, uh, there, sorry, there is previous close. This is the interesting one, which is market price. What happens is our market starts taking bids and offers from about 8.30, 8.35 in the morning, but we only open at 9 o'clock. That is what we call the open auction. We get the same thing in the evening from 10 to 5 until 5 o'clock. What's happening is bids and offers go into the market, but no, un no, no transactions are happening. So you might want to buy a 10 rand and I want to sell a 10 rand, but it sits there and it waits until the 9 o'clock open or the 5 p.m. close. And then at whatever price the maximum volume will happen, it then goes through. Before 9 o'clock in the morning, this is going to show you what the theoretical uncrossing price is. In other words, what will be that open trade for that particular stock. Now, it's going to be changing as, as that, you know, that, that opening auction is happening, but it gives you a sense of where the stocks are going to be opening. And ditto at 10 to 5, same story, it gives you a sense of where the market is going to be closing. Now, you can add in, um, if, if you want, you can add in, um, you, you can add your orders, you, delete orders during that auction period. But if it's uncrossing is a 10 rand and you're a buyer at 9 rand 90, you're not going to get uncrossed. Uh, what, so that's my J200. There's my J201, which is the mid cap, exactly the same process. There's a watch list that I have created titled under, watch underscore list. This is all the stocks that I'm looking at, the stocks that I've got that I'm in particular interest in. Again, Marion Roberts had a sense announcement today coming out from Aton, and this is around the Competition Commission saying no to the Aton takeover of Marion Roberts. Uh, Senders Health. So these are stocks that I've added particularly to the watch list that I'm interested in. Again, there's my auction uncrossing price. What I've got here is a map. So here I'm searching on J203, which is the Orsche. So it's about 160 stocks. It's pretty much about 95% of the market. There's about 400 shares, but those other 200 plus are so tiny. And all this is just showing me is very simply, it's the stock and the percentage move. And the size of the block is dependent on that sense percentage move. I can change that to say, show me on market cap. But that then always gets skewed because NASPASS, BTR, ANH, et cetera, are so incredibly large that I'm really interested in 
show me that move. You've also got option for market value and for market volume. Uh, I'm not interested in them, but they're there if you want. And then, of course, you can do the colors. I'm doing color and percentage move. So those reds change, the greens get greener, the reds get redder as we get those percentage moves. You can click on them and highlight a particular stock. It's telling you the sector it's in, financials, consumer discretionary, materials, etc. Here's what I've set up something for my lazy trading. Now, what I do when I'm trading lazy is typically I'm pu pulling in an index. So let's say, uh, what am I long? I'm long the S&P 500 right now, so SP 500. And what you'll note is that all three areas updated once. Now, there's not going to be any sense or bid and offer for S&P. So let's go look at Murray's. What I've got here is my bid and offer for Murray's. This is live bid and offer. It will be delayed if you're on the free plan. To the side of it here, I've got the last 20 trades that have gone through the market, the price, the volume, and the time they went through. Below that is a filter on sense announcements for Murray and Roberts only. And on the side here is a weekly chart. Now I can change this chart to any time frame. I can drop it to a daily if I want. And as you can see, my I've got some uh, moving averages there. Next week we'll delve into the moving averages. But this just gives you a sense of, 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 of a nice quick picture. So Anglo Platinum came with results today. Let's see how's Anglo Platinum responding to that results announcement. So it's off about a quarter of a percent. Uh, if we zoom out on the chart, we get some historic data. Still trading just off recent highs. But let's go to a weekly chart because I want to go way back in time. Let's go back to all data. There we go, all data. And you can see it looking good, but well off those highs from the 06, 07 uh, commodity boom. So what this is, it's I call it my lazy, but in essence, what this is doing is this is showing me a quick snapshot of an individual stock that I'm interested in, an individual stock that I that I care for more information about, um, and et cetera. So I can get one stock, one company, one index, all in one place, nice and quick. What you will note is how come when I change there, so if I change that to NASPAS, all three change. And what I've got is those little yellow buttons up there, or broadcast group. So I've made them, sorry, not yellow, red. I've made each of them red so that they linked together. So when I change one, the others change at the same time. So what I could have is one red and two greens, and then the greens would be linked. In essence, what we've got here is I've made sure that when I change one of these blocks, all three blocks change at the same time. Uh, this is my portfolio screen, and I'm going to do a, show a couple of things here. Uh, let's pick that is my uh, tax-free portfolio, which should be popping up now. So this just shows you your portfolio, what your holdings are. What I've got on the side here is an order ticket, uh, which I can then, again, pick the account that I want to place an order on. And then I would be typing in the code of the particular stock I was wanting. I've got SYG. Uh, WD sits in that. This is a tax-free account. And now I can trade. I can select my volume. I want to uh, 1,000. I can select the type of order I want, the lifetime, and submit into market. With my internet being unhappy, I'm not getting data. I'm going to come back to that page. Uh, what I'm sitting with here is my Aussie trading screen. Fair bits of information sitting here. On the left-hand side is Aussie, which is my 15-minute chart. There is depth on Aussie suffix. Uh, I've also got my J200 chart sitting there. Folks, if you're struggling, some folks are still struggling with screen. Uh, I am recording. We'll send the video out. Don't stress it. Um, and we can catch up again next week when I do the Trader One Thursday, 12.30. <coughs> Excuse me. What I've also got here is that uh, depth analysis, which I mentioned earlier. So what you can do is detach widget and pop it up into its own screen so that you get a full screen on that particular widget. And what this is showing me is Aussie, the bids and offers, and last trade, and the blue line is where those trades have gone through. So I can at a glance say to you the pressure's on the buy side. What I'm expecting is 220 buy contracts, top left up there. 
191 sole contracts, top right up there, now 190. And you can get a sense that the pressure's on the buy side. I can also say, show me non-cumulative. In other words, show every single contract as they sit, or every single price point at which there are contracts and the volume associated at that point. Let me shut that and carry on here. Let me try and load that in the meantime. And then here are my 721. This really is, is, is my, my scratch pad in many senses. Um, so here what I was doing is I've got a whole bunch of ch charts that I've added uh, uh, relative to each other so I can sort of track and I'm looking at indices and, and ETFs and the like, get a sense of what their performance has been. In this particular point, we're going back to uh, February. Uh, I can zoom that out and go back to let's go back exactly to beginning of the year so there we go uh from close on 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 of the end of last year and at a quick snapshot i can get a sense of what the the who's winning who's underperforming who's out in ahead we can see that the winner's been s p followed by resi uh, followed by the Ashburton 1200, uh, and then uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, and so that list will go down. Uh, the white one is our top 40. So it's been a, a decentish year pretty much across the board, but you can tell that there's that the S&P remains in the winner. You can also tell that when the sell-off was happening, it was happening fairly across the board with a few exceptions, one being the Tracy, which is a ABSA cash ETF, uh, and interestingly, the Ashburton 1200, because the currency weakened, so that obviously had a beneficial impact there. But what I want to do here is carve a widget. So I'm going to drop down, I'm going to carve, and let's uh, split horizontally. Now you can see my screen has got a top and a bottom to it. Down here I can carve further, or I can add one of these into the equation. Um, now, many of these we have looked at, and I'll go back to them, the market depth, the map, the status, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, let's bring a news ticker in. Um, and what the news ticker will do is literally scrolling news across your screen. Uh, that one particularly, this sense came out seven minutes ago. I can pause on it and then click on it and get more information. Um, I can drag that uh, I can drag it down to make it just sit at the bottom of that process and, and running across. Uh, you can set it to go scroll through like that, uh, and you can tell it whether you want slow, medium, or fast. Let's go for a faster ticker, and then that is now just scrolling down at the bottom. If you don't like that particular ticker, you can replace the widget, in which case you can say, actually, show me, please, dividends. Um, and now you're going to have to tell it who you care about the dividends for. Let's pull that up. And I'd have to pull in. Let's go back to Murray's. And that's going to show you all the dividends that have come out from Murray's going back. But if I'm totally tired of that and I say, you know what, actually, I don't even want that anymore. I just go there and I say, remove widget. And I'm back to that full screen picture again. So I can get the full take of the picture. And you can carve that screen as much as you want. If I just want to replace, make another tab. Then I just go up there and I say, add a widget, and I say, show me market depth. And there comes market depth, and let's call up uh, NASPASS. So there's my market depth is five deep, and on the side here will be the last 20 trades. Again, I can carve this. There's a lot of dead space in this screen, and I can decide I don't particularly want it anymore and then kill it in that sense. Uh, this here is an order pad, which I've showed you already. Uh, what you can always be doing, if we're sitting on the top 40 here, and we're on watch list, and I want to buy Monday, I just click on the ask. And there you see it, it pops up there. It's populated with Monday. What I have to then say is which account do I want to trade in. I've got to give order type, volumes, prices, etc. But immediately it just pops up, and there's details. Um, and it, nice and quickly. So Let's kill Monday and let's rather say, let's do a trade on Sappy. And there, Sappy just pops up immediately. If I hit 
that volume there, it will auto-populate that volume for me and say as a, a sell order. What's important is you can buy or sell. Make sure I clicked on buy there, you'll see it said place buy order at the bottom. I clicked on sell, place sell order at the bottom. That's where you confirm your transaction. And what you're basically doing here is you just so you're saying, what do you want to do? Buy or sell, select, and off you go to the races. In this case, I'm saying, nope, don't want to do it. And it says, are you sure you want to close the order? And then the answer comes back. Yep, I am sure. Thank you all very much for playing. Uh, that is not loading. Okay. Let's come back to here. One of the, 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 the tricks is, is knowing uh, indice names and, and, and the like. Now, in many cases, for top 40, uh, there it is nice and simple. Others, uh, Resi 10. Uh, there's your Resi, which is the JSC. You will note what I was doing was using the J210, which is also the Resi, but is the JSC code for the Resi. You could also type NPN, which gives you NASPASS, or you can type NASPASS, and that will also give you NASPASS. So you can search by the short alpha code if you know it. If you don't know the short alpha code, you can just search by the, by, by, by the name of the, the stock or the equity. Uh, if you go, for example, ZARS, you're going to get all the ZARS, but you're going to get it the wrong way around, so you want to do USD ZAR, and that will then, there it is, and that's the South African dollar, uh, and that's, yeah, they're both right, but we express our ZAR as 1391, it's bouncing around, uh, let me quickly sort it on description, uh, so it sorts on, on, on the 1391, if we do it the other way, it's, what is it, it's 16 cents and some change, it's not wrong, it's just a totally different way, and not how we represent our currency in this particular space. Um, <clears throat> What else is also important is if you're looking for the offshore indices, typically by their name. So Japan is J-A-P-E-A-N, and there's Japan, I-D, uh, German. So rather than searching, uh, I can't spell German, there's DAX 30. Um, oftentimes, so DAX 30, I would have looked from, does it, does it give me Kakaron 40? And there's CAC40.ID. Uh, that is .jsc, .id is the index. Uh, FTSE 100 index. Um, what we don't do is okay, and even if I search Nikkei, it will then say to me Japan. Um, SP 500. There it is. There. Dot ID. Uh, Nasdaq. Dot ID. So you can pull up global indices, you can pull up the various different commodities, uh, Brent, price on oil, etc. And you can see I've got them sitting here as they run through um, different commodities at the same time. It's just my, my sort of stock standard page where I'm loading stuff to keep it nice and simple. Folks, that's my uh, uh, view. I'm in at the half hour as I was expecting. Um, if you've got some questions or something, you can drop them in. Otherwise, you can get hold of online share trading. I know a bunch of you were struggling. I have recorded. We will send the link out to you uh, in the next couple of hours this afternoon as soon as I've got it uploaded. We'll send that link to all. And then next Thursday, I'm doing one more focused on the trading. I wasn't touching much on charts, etc. here today. I showed you some charts, but I haven't really gone into, into the details of the charts. Uh, we can come to that next Thursday when I look at my trading plans, etc. This is my core trading screen for, for Aussie futures, uh, keeping it nice and simple.